Most people would probably say that the most groundbreaking element of forensic science in recent years has been DNA. When it first came as a breakthrough, uh, you needed quite a lot of blood or other human secretions to get a positive test of any kind, and it took ages for the test to come through. I think it was up to three weeks initially. Now you can get DNA from a microscopic sample and you can get it, you can actually turn it around in a matter of hours. So that's an extraordinary leap forward in just a few years. And as DNA technology has advanced, so it seems to me that's been reflected in the change in the courtroom. We seem to have moved from a, a testimony-based system to much more evidentially based uh, facts that can't be argued with, scientific fact that can't be argued with in the courtroom. That's become the gold standard of evidence. I suppose an example of this would be the famous case of Dr. Crippen. Now, Crippen was arrested mainly on the basis of uh, human remains found in the cellar of the home he'd shared with his wife, who had disappeared, allegedly murdered by her husband. Bernard Spilsbury, the famous pathologist, gave evidence in the trial saying this was indisputably the flesh of, of Mrs. Bella Crippen. Uh, although this was disputed at the trial by other pathologists. On the basis of that, Crippen was, was found guilty and, and hanged. But later analysis of the flesh in, in the Crippen case seems to indicate that it was not the flesh of his wife. Uh, DNA testing had been done on, on collateral descendants of Bella Crippen. And also that it may not even have been a woman's flesh. So the, the crime of which Crippen was uh, accused and tried and hanged may not even have taken place at all.